Uh, hello folks, this is Jason Rogash. I want to make a video today about election fraud, election theft, people voting multiple times, illegal immigrants voting, pew polls, Donald Trumps. Um, <laughs> or Trump. Um, first of all, let me be perfectly clear. There is a long and storied tradition just in the last 16 years that has been profoundly documented by Greg Palast and others about voter fraud and election theft by Republicans. It is well known to anybody who pays attention, who is a serious, interested researcher, investigator, whatever. Since 2000, the Republicans have been stealing elections. Now, they've done it before, but I'm just going to stay from 2000 to 2017. We, of course, know that the Supreme Court stopped the recount in Florida during the 2000 presidential elections between Al Gore and George W. Bush. The Supreme Court... Stop the recount in Florida, which would have given the election to Al Gore. Stop the recount. I'm going to say that again. Said George W. Bush is president, and this ruling will never be used as precedent for any other case. Now, that sounds like a totalitarianism to me. That sounds like authoritarianism. That sounds like a group of people in a room. It sounds like a conspiracy, a group of people in a room making a plan and making sure that their person gets in. And that's what they did with the Supreme Court, which was predominantly, say it with me, conservatives, which was majority conservatives. Now, then you start to see um, there's a woman by the name of Bev Harris who began work about Diebold machines that were being hacked into the touch screens and in some other cases, that in some other forms of, of these voting machines that you would touch, they, they, she showed it. There's been documentaries made about this where you hit the voter, the Diebold machine twice and it would go for, you know, if you'd hit Gore, boom, boom, it would actually go to Bush. They Then they would hack these machines in other ways and actually change the database inside of them. They could they actually controlled the hard drive. Um, type, go Google Bev Harris, go Google Diebold voting machines. All done in Republican all done by Republicans to Democrats in lower income districts, predominantly minorities, because they say it with me, vote Democrat. So those people have had their votes stolen for the last 20 years. And I'm not just talking about in their their representation in Washington, you know, their 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 rep their represent their representative and their senator and their president. I'm talking even at a local level. They have had voter, votes tossed out, votes called, you know, soiled votes, uh, dirty votes, um, you know, the hanging Chad vote thing that was going on. That goes on in every state that uses, you know, these optic machines, people not filling in bubbles, those all kinds of things. When they'd write the name of the candidate, but then the bubble wouldn't be filled. All kinds of people have been having their votes disenfranchised on both sides. But Democrats are being targeted by Republicans like Chris Kobach. Now, I'm going to leave a link below to Greg Palace's excellent video, The Best Democracy That Money Can Buy. He just put it out. It's about the 2016 president election, but he goes back to 2000. He discusses some of the stuff that I'm discussing here. He discusses cross-check, which is that which is used what by 39 states now, which is it, it checks if a voter is registered in two different states. And, and what they really did was use names of ethnic groups like Jackson, Washington, Jones, um, Wong. Greg Palace goes into great detail and shows how this is done. And they're mostly black and they're mostly minorities. And because they vote Democrat, the Republicans. And then that's that's a form of vote theft and disenfranchisement. Then you have gerrymandering, which is redistricting. There's an excellent book written by David Daly called Rat Fucked. And he goes into the details about North Carolina. But he also talks about Tom DeLay in Texas, how he did it and how they've done it in other states. The Republicans have a long storied history of disenfranchising voters. The last 20 years they have shown that they have very, they have virtually no regard for minority voters or poor voters. They give them broken machines, they throw their votes away, they don't allow recounts. Look what they did to Jill Stein in three different states. And she had the money to back it up. And they said, nope, conservative courts stopped recounts. That brings us back to the Supreme Court in 2000, you know, putting Bush as president. The Electoral College has only been used, what, twice in the last 100 years, and it's been used twice against Democrats, and it's been used twice in the last 16 years. It's like Lance Armstrong and his seven Tour de France's. It's like anything that's too good to be true, it probably is. 
the Republicans have gerrymandered, they've stolen, and what really bothers me about this, and I'm going to shift the gear here, and I may upset some progressives, some other people, they have pinned this loss to Donald Trump all on corporate Democrats. You know, it's corporate Democrats. And you're right. Corporate Democrats are the fucking worst. These people that's Goldman Sachs, you know, from Schumer to Pelosi to Clinton, they're terrible people. Obama, all of them. But what really bothers me is that if in fact, and it can be proven, and it can be proven, that Republicans have demonstratively stolen and disenfranchised votes and voters... How does the democratic message ever, or a socialist message, or a workers, or a left message, ever get, how does it ever start to resonate? How does it ever capture the imagination of the American people if literally it's stolen at the polls? It's stolen at the polls from them. So, and, and to put it all on, and neoliberalism, of course, but most people don't even know what neoliberalism is. They know that NAFTA fucked them. And that's bad. And they know, but they don't. But a lot of people for a lot of years have been voting against Republicans or had been voting Democrat. And it can be shown in North Carolina, Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida. I can go on. Texas. And yet they remain Republican or they, they have gerrymandered the, the district so much that they've just turned, you know, they'll, they'll dip into a district that has. They'll take 10,000 Democrats out of a district and put them with Republicans. There's 40,000. And, and, and then you just you just dip into these di- Republican dist- Democratic districts and you, you turn them into nothing. And that's what's happening. And this can, be dis- this can be shown to be proven. Not like Donald Trump's allegations of a Pew poll that said that three, that said 300, there's a potential that 300,000 maybe uh, illegal immigrants were registered to vote. But they haven't proven that they voted, and this is all based on people doing a poll online, essentially. It's been debunked. It's been analyzed. And I'll leave some links below to that, some people that can explain that much better than I can and can go into more detail. Donald Trump is pretending like it's Democrats who are stealing elections, and Democrats do not steal elections. Oh, they fucked Bernie Sanders pretty good with the superdelegates and all that. Don't get me wrong. But they don't tend, they tend not to steal elections, steal people's votes. They don't disenfranchise and they don't gerrymander for whatever reason. And don't give me that. Well, they need to toughen up, Snowflake. They need, we need to get, that's not where you go. You don't, you know what? If you want to become them, then do that. But that's what they tried to do with, you know, becoming more corporatist and becoming more Goldman Sachs and becoming Republican light. So they tried that. So you got to go the other way. Um, And this video is predominantly to say, Republicans are proven over and over and over again. The, the 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 story. Go look this up. Just type in Google. Karl Rove's tech guy uh, dies in plane crash. Um, go look up the testimony of people who worked with Karl Rove and helped him write, helped him steal elections. It's out there. It's provable. And this all started. All of this about Democrats stealing elections started on Fox News. Just like the 2000 presidency was announced first. On Fox News. Everybody else was saying Gord won, Gord won. It was too close to call Gord won. And Fox came out and said, George Bush is your president. And this is the same fucking thing. Fox News, which is the predominant propaganda arm of the business corporate right-wing agenda setters in this country. That's their main propaganda arm. Is the one that the president of the United States claims is the only one that tells the truth. Fox News wouldn't know the truth if... It swam up and bit whoever the fuck is over there anymore. I don't even know who's even on Fox News anymore. This is, it's bizarre. It's very, it's Orwellian. It's alternative facts. It's Kellyanne Conway and people like that. Creatures of the night. <laughs> coming out of coming out of the pits of hell. <laughs> Steve Bannon. <coughs> Excuse me. But when you hear this malarkey about Republicans... Or excuse me about Democrats stealing elections. Know that it's completely untrue, and it's exactly and it's all created by Fox News, and it's all to try to trick you into believing that the Democrats are doing what the Republicans are doing. And to all progressives who think it was just Hillary Clinton and her terrible policies, <laughs> start realizing that your country is being stolen at a grassroots level by gerrymandering and disenfranchisement. Start understanding that maybe 
the Democratic message never can get through. So Democrats feel like they have to become more right wing because they're literally being said, well, no one's voting for us. We're losing. So what do we do? We want to go to the winner. We want to become more centrist. And Republicans have been proven to steal elections. That is what is partially happening. There are more than one reason why Hillary Clinton isn't president. But I believe, from the evidence that I've seen, the, the election was flat out, straight up, 100% stolen from her. And if you don't, if you're not honest about that, but you're honest about George W. Bush stealing the election in 2000, you're, I think you, you can't have those two contradictory thoughts in your mind. Hillary Clinton had the same thing happen to her that Al Gore had happen to him. But worse, because she won by 3 million votes. She won by the largest margin, like, by ever, like a landslide. But, but, and Donald Trump can't accept that someone might be more popular than him because his whole life is ratings and popularity and shallow, superficial nothing. Like, it's a perfect example of that wall he's building, that 13 to 15 billion dollars that was just allotted by Paul Ryan who is probably the most unctuous creature on the planet and then the second most unctuous creature which is Mitch McConnell standing chicken neck Mitch McConnell standing next to him that wall just as an example of how shallow Donald Trump is and how shallow he thinks about things that in fact we're not doing anything economically we're not going to make any decisions that would help the workers on either side of the border we're not going to try to get the IMF or the World Bank out of you know nothing detailed just a wall that shows the kind of shallowness of Donald Trump. When you start to listen to these motherfuckers tell you, and, and, and then Democrats are every progressive, and nobody really understands what's going on, and people did vote for Democrats, and people did want Hillary Clinton's vision more than they wanted Donald Trump's vision, and people did want Al Gore's vision more than they wanted George W.'s vision. And, and those visions, and, and those are the ones that we, the popular names that we all know. What about the state and local people that in your own backyard who've had elections stolen from them by the Koch brothers and Paul Singer and the Heritage Foundation and Citizens United and Super PACs? What about those people? You know, we're pretending like Democrats, there's an even playing field. There isn't. And don't give me your, well, you know, they give as much money, that corporation gives as much money to that Democrat as they do to that Republican. In some certain st circumstances, you're absolutely, absolutely correct. In some circumstances, that's not correct. So you have to take it case by case. And when you look at how redistricting and you look at how courts are being controlled more by conservatives and, and stopping recounts and stopping the democratic process, what they did to Jill Stein, what the, all the things that I just laid out to you that Republicans have done that are mainstream news that you can go look up for yourself and show they've been stealing elections. They're stealing best democracy money can buy. You know what? I'm going to leave you with this. You know what unifies Republicans? You know why? You know what unifies Republicans? Money. You know what unifies Democrats, liberals, that whole thing? Not money. So people that are interested in the environment don't. I mean, real, not Al Gore, real environmentalists. They're not, money doesn't motivate them. Justice does. When people want Black Lives Matter and offshoots of Black Lives Matter, not necessarily Black Lives Matter, but like the hands up guy people and the people that are cop walk and cop watch people that are actually out there on the streets making, you know, monitoring police officers, they're not interested in money. They're interested in justice. The people that are, are um, trying to get people out of jail that are liberal, the ACLU, money is not their motivating factor justice honor their morality their ethics all you have in this world is your word right all you have is what you believe in and what you're willing to stand up for everything else is just you know desks and fucking and, and novelty but all you really have is what you believe and what you really your real opinion is and you what you really will stand up for and democrats that's why people always say well how do you unite liberals you're not going to unite liberals. There is not one thing that's going to unify them. Whereas Republicans can get unified, conservatives and Republicans, they're unified by money. So it's very, very easy to unify Republicans. And by the way, the corporate Democrats have noticed this. They're playing the Republican game. Bill Clinton started it. He saw how much easier, how much, what the Republicans were doing. They were unifying themselves with big business and money. And that worked. 
So Bill Clinton, who came from Arkansas, a Rockefeller state, he was not the he's not the most moral person on the planet. Let's just be honest. Even if you think all of the Clinton Chronicles are lies, even if you think all that shit is just Robert Mellon Schaaf going after him, even if you think all of it's horseshit, and a lot of it is, he's still a piece of shit with women, and he was still a piece of shit in a lot of ways, and his brother especially, uh, and some of his business dealings as well, but which are provable. So you can get, you can, if you even, if you want to ignore the Maine, Arkansas stuff, which he has never been directly connected to any cocaine dealing, the Maine, Arkansas thing, you know what it hinders on? That he was asked as governor to give 26 or what was it? 20, $50,000 to an investigation to investigate it further. And he never got back with the guy that asked for the money and for the investigation. That's what it all hinders on. Does it look bad? Of course it does. But then you know that that was the CIA running cocaine into Arkansas. What do you think the CIA told Bill Clinton? They walked in his governor's office because we know that they visit governors all the time because we can go talk to the governor, the body, Jesse, the body Ventura. When I was governor of Minnesota, they came and visited me, did the CIA. And that's what they do. They go, I mean, Jesse Ventura tells a story about them coming in and talking to him. The CIA talking to the, the governor of Minnesota. So, what do you think? I mean, just use your just use your imagination. And Republicans, Democrats have noticed that this money thing that that the new Democrats that came in in the nineties realized that they were doing they wanted to do what the what the Republicans wanted to do. They thought that money was the way to unify. And they soon found out that that's not what unifies liberals. And it's really, it's, it's, it's the exact opposite. So you're never going to get the radical arms because you're always trying to get them some, you're never going to get them because they don't want to be part of it. So, because they're never, and if they do want to be part of it, what they want is, like I said, justice. Um, so to sum up, there is no election fraud coming from Democrats or very little. The election fraud, the election theft, all of it is coming from the Republicans. And Fox News knows very well this is true. This is another agenda setting. Um, what is it called? You, you, They're redefining the message. They're reframing the message. They're flat out lying. They are, do, they're telling you the, the Democrats are doing exactly what they're doing. This is a classic. I mean, I would, I don't know where Frank Luntz is. I'm sure he's probably part of some of this. This is alternative facts. This is a lie. And your president is, you know, so I just want to be clear. There's enough evidence, if you want to go research it, that voter fraud and election theft and those types of things are predominantly come from Republicans. Thank you for listening.